Welcome back to Pyramid Lake Games. Have you ever wondered why end of level recap screens like you may have seen in the original Doom or games by Telltale like The Walking Dead or Batman, uh, why they work so well? I'm going to let you in on a little secret about the gamification psychology behind those screens and show you a little bit of what I've done with Night Window that takes inspiration from both. So before we jump into the psychology and examples of how that works really well, I'd like to step you through just a really brief example of what I've done for Night Window. The overall goal is to stay alive and there's certain things that are within the world that you need to interact with that can heighten your chances of survival. Let's just put it that way. So for the sake of this example, let's lock the door. So to trigger the next part of the game, the player has to go to sleep. So then much like Doom or Telltale Games, now this chapter is complete and you start to see the decisions that you made that actually impacted the overall narrative of what you're doing with this game. So it pulls live information from the server to see if you made the same decisions as other people. So you'll remember that uh, we locked the door so you can see at the top, did you secure the hotel room? And we did, and so did 83% of other players. So let's, I'm gonna restart that. And now, let's run in there quick and choose not to lock the door. So if this works well, it should pull the same data, but it should show you the inverse statistic of it. So, you and 16% or 17% of other players did not lock the hotel room. So there's a little bit of context there, so it's not just spitting out the result of 80% of people did this thing. It actually is smart enough to know that you did lock the door, so how many other people locked the door? And if you did not lock it, how many other people did not do that? So that is a key part of this overall psychology here is that it's not just representing live data or any kind of a feedback like that. It's, it's that it's contextual to the decisions that you made. So when you do something in the game, it has a direct piece of feedback that correlates to the things that you did. You may end up doing all these things, and then maybe chapter two, chapter three, there's a different outcome because of the decision that you made here. And then you kind of sit back and think, oh, well, what if I replayed the game and did this one thing? So as an indie developer, especially if you're a solo developer, you only have so many resources, so much time, so much money, and often neither of those things. So you have to think about how can you create a game that has longevity in some way. So let's say Night Window as a whole is a 20-minute game that you can play if you just kind of run through and complete all the tasks. But now, even though it's a 20 minute game, because of a screen like this, players are presented other options. Well, if I play this game this other way, or I talk to this one person and I choose this one option, do I get a different outcome? So it starts to really engage people in another way, uh, whether they're completionists and they want to unlock all the achievements or unlock all the endings, doesn't really matter. It's more so the exploration of what's possible within this game. And how do I get that one event that I saw somebody talk about on YouTube or, you know, my friend was telling me about this thing. How do I make that happen? So then people start to create YouTube videos about it. Um, they write articles about it. They break down the strategy of, okay, you need to lock the hotel room door. You need to leave the curtains open. When you go to talk in the diner, you need to ask this question. And that opens up, you know, five minutes later, this other scene that will happen that wasn't available before. It opens up so many opportunities to extend the replayability of a game. So you can see on the right side here in the inspector that we're, we're tracking two things in this event manager over here. Scene one, lock the door or they close the curtains. Again, just for the sake of this this video because I don't want to give away the things that we're actually doing in the game. So I close the curtains. You can see the check mark here now. Open them or I can lock the door. 
So it keeps track of the state of all of these things and that's what the event manager does. But then I also have the save data script and I have it set up so I can disable, so I'm not always pushing data and fetching data from the server because you know that adds up over time, especially as you're doing these little things. So what I've done is when I do this, it actually pushes the data to this list element, this array, so I can see the platform is zero, which is PC. So if it ever releases on another system, I can filter the data based on the system if it matters in the future. But scene number, event number, so event, uh, right here is the top one, you know, did you lock the door? The next event, which is a one, is did you close the curtain? So it's a Boolean thing, zero equals false, one equals true. And then it tracks how many deaths you've had as you've tried to complete this chapter, which is really nice. Uh, because if you remember back, so this is very heavily inspired by Telltale Games and the Walking Dead series, and plenty of other games that they've done, uh, utilize this gamification aspect of a chapter so you can go back and replay and try other uh, try other narrative beats um, so this is heavily inspired by that but then if you remember you know original doom where you complete a level and every time the number counted up from number of kills uh, number of deaths the amount of time it took you to com complete that level uh, how many secrets you found, things like that. Like every percentage that it calculated up every second, you'd hear that, uh, that gunshot. And there's, there's this reactionary, there's this um, psychological aspect. It's almost like a, you know, going to a casino where you hear these, these sounds when you complete something or you, you play a, a slot machine and you hear the the sound ringing up and even though you don't win more than let's say you know a few cents or a quarter or something you still get this hit of dopamine in your brain where it's like oh uh, i did something very successful this is really good and, you know i did such a great job because this sound took 10 seconds to play it was really loud and it was really exciting to hear so it must have been really good and really rewarding so you kind of short circuit the brain a little bit to trick it into thinking that there's more of a reward than there actually is because in this case obviously they're not you know earning any money or anything like that but they they feel accomplished because they've completed something or they did something that maybe nobody else or a small percentage of people did within the game so they're always it incentivizes them to explore and find things that maybe other people didn't necessarily know about and you see the same kind of thing with achievements, uh, like an Xbox Live. If it's a rare achievement that only maybe 1% of people that have played the game have unlocked, there's a special little diamond icon and sound that happens because of that. And it's really that overall gamification of a lot of things that, that people are doing with mobile games, with everything, with apps, um, that I'm trying to pull in here in a strategic way where the main priority is establishing the narrative and pushing the story forward and making it enjoyable for the player and making this kind of world let me actually restart this and play through it a little bit more as I'm talking here so one of the things that I'm trying to accomplish here is building this world that doesn't necessarily like this vehicle driving by Maybe most players won't even see that vehicle that drives by. And there's no real call out that says, hey, go out to the road and watch the vehicle drive by. But there may be a narrative element that happens because of that. That's not clear until you complete that chapter or you're nudged to go talk to this one character that talks about, hey, you know, this person drives by every night at 9 p.m. or whatever it is. Um, so... I want to build this realistic world where you don't really know what's happening until you have the hindsight of, oh, maybe I should have done that one thing that I didn't even think about. Because if we fill up a screen, especially a, you know, a suspenseful horror kind of game like this, with prompts and UI that, that nudge you into different directions, it really takes away, at least for the sake of what I'm trying to accomplish here, it takes away the atmosphere of I don't know what I'm doing I need to explore because I know this one little element I know that I need to go find my hotel room and that's your one task everything else that happens around that is up to the player 
So, you know, you, you arrive at the diner, whether you go talk to the, the person working in the diner, whether you order food, you know, whatever it is, it's up to the player to explore and experience this world in their own way and hopefully share that with other players, you know, whether they're playing it together, whether they're streaming, whatever it is. Uh, and the intent is to really share it in some way that I don't see many independent games doing which hopefully people will enjoy. It's really important to think about these little victories that you can have to incentivize the players to go and explore more of the game. Because in, with a lot of different things, it could be business, websites, marketing, whatever, you have such a small percentage of time to capture somebody's interest before they move on to something else. So if you can present things like this to them, and let them know that this is even a thing, uh, whether that's through marketing, trailers, you know, whatever it is, however you showcase your game, if you can outline some of these things, people will invest more time into it because now they're more engaged. Okay, I made this decision. Uh, I played this for five minutes. Maybe I'm not too into the game, but I'm really curious what this decision is going to play out for, you know, chapter two and chapter three, what the difference will be. And I didn't really like that ending, but I'm going to start over and make this other decision and see if I like that one better because I know there's, you know, five different endings or something. So there's a way to really engage your players with a limited amount of content in a creative way and leverage that the core human psychology to keep them engaged because of that, because of the, the fear of missing out and all those different elements that I talked about earlier. What I would love you to do is leave a comment down below and obviously like and share and all that good stuff, but more importantly, leave a comment down below and let me know if you've come across any other games that use these end of level, end of chapter recap screens that you feel it had done it really well, uh, whether that's a mobile game, a console game, a PC game, whatever it is. Uh, I'd be really interested in exploring some of those a little bit more and if you have any questions about how to implement this, or the value of it for your users or anything like that, just let me know and maybe we can talk through it in another video.